Hey, Van, good to talk to you. Um, how would you say the beginning of practice has been and what's what stood out to you the most about what you've seen so far? Well, I think our guys, and, and this will be a recurring theme, I think. I think our guys have handled the adjustments, you know, the different adjustments we've had to make just to be able to practice. Uh, and I, I think our guys, uh, with being away from football, with not having spring practice, uh, they've come out with a lot of enthusiasm and are excited about, you know, what we've, what we've been able to accomplish so far in terms of staying safe and staying healthy uh, and everyone going out with the right frame of mind. How are you feeling right now about the depth that you guys have at, at corner this year? I feel really good about it because of the fact that, you know, we have some, some youth, you know, guys like T Denson and uh, Cameron Key. And then we have some, some definite experience in, in guys like AJ Parker and Keandre Thomas, even though he's, you know, coming in as a transfer. So I think we have a good mix of guys. And, and I like where our group, where our group is mentally right now as well. You feel like Thomas has the potential to be a guy that can start from day one? Well, it's, it's a competition and, uh, you know, it, it's an open competition. Uh, if he had to be out there, I, I'd feel just as well as I would with AJ out there with Lance. All those guys have shown to be able to play college football on this level. So I, I'm, like I said, we, we're, we're still going through it. We're still earning our stripes. Uh, but, you know, the guy who has consistently started at Kansas State and in this program more than anybody else would be AJ, but, but he also understands that it's a, it's a day-to-day -day competition. And all of those guys are in, in a good place, I think, with our staff and with myself to be able to go out and, and perform, you know, on this level. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. What else? Hey, Van, uh, have you guys had to implement any kind of new protocols or have you talked with the guys at all about being a little bit safer now that all the students are back on campus? Well, you know, I, we, we've definitely talked to them about the fact that this is, this is the, the biggest challenge that we've had thus far in terms of uh, handling your business away from the facility because we've, we've been in somewhat of a bubble uh, so far since they've been back on campus. And now when you integrate the students into the campus, then, you know, we have to make sure that we take the measures that, that they've done so well here uh, in Veneer. And we have to take those out into the classroom settings. We have to take those, continue to take those out into the community. Well, it's, it's a different kind of community. And the campus is different than what you've been accustomed to thus far. But I think our guys understand that as a challenge and they understand the importance of of handling themselves the same way that, that we've done the last few weeks uh, if, if we want to continue down this path of being able to play football. And I know it's still early in camp, so you might not have a total answer here, but can you feel the defense playing a certain kind of different way now that you do have Joe in charge? And can you see it, I don't know, fitting to, to what he wants yet? Well, I think, I think Joe does a good job of, of expressing to our guys what he wants. And the fact that, you know, we're not a, we're not a new staff. So, so they knew, you know, his level of intensity. They knew his level of detail. And so they've, they've kind of come along and, and done exactly what, what he would have expected as a defensive coordinator. So I, I, think, I think we're seeing uh, from them what we'll continue to see. Like I said earlier, there's, there's guys in different spots, especially at the cornerback position that uh, well, they're learning. Uh, and they are, uh, you know, improving each day. And we're, we're excited about that. So to, to really answer your question, uh, we're seeing it, uh, but we understand we still have a long ways to go to be able to say we are a complete defense. Dirk. Uh, Coach, how would you characterize what you've seen so far from your new transfers, Keandre, but also Justin Gardner? Well, I like the fact that those guys come to work every day. That's been exciting. That's been refreshing. And then, like I said earlier about Ke Keandre especially, you know, he has a, a certain level of experience. He's played the game on this level before, and, and that's an exciting point. Uh, but, but they both work hard, and they're actually, they're actually good friends, and they're fitting into the group. You know, that's, that's always a concern whenever you bring a, a transfer in is to how long it will take for him to fit into – 
the group? How long will it take for him to buy into the culture that you're trying to build? And I think those guys both came in with an open mind, but the guys who were in, in the room already have accepted them. And so I'm, I'm excited about where we are. But again, I say to them that, you know, there's still a lot more for them to learn, even, even with the level of experience they have. There's still a lot more to learn. Uh, and, they, and they are progressing rather well, I like to say. And what's the challenge been like in preparation with just probably the players realizing the, the fragility of this season? Is it hard to get them to kind of focus in on what they're try- supposed to be doing since there's so many other circumstances to follow? Well, there's, there's been adjustments all over. You know, we, we've had to make adjustments as to how we eat, how they get practice, uh, how they get practice equipment, uh, how we dress in the locker room, uh, the, the medical protocols. So, so there's been adjustments all over. And, uh, you know, sometimes it makes it a little bit different just to, with all these adjustments, what do I do in cover three? You know what I mean? Sometimes you can lose that. But, but I, I, I am excited about the commitment that our guys have made to adjusting to all of it. You know, even, even in, our, in, in the sense of our staff, you know, there's some coaches that don't even know how to turn a computer on. And those guys have had to learn how to operate and hold meetings over Zoom, you know, in the last few months. So, so there's been adjustments all over. And I think that, you know, as a staff, as players, as a support staff, I'm, I'm really proud of, of the progress we've made. So uh, even in those ways, you know, those medical equipment, nutrition protocol adjustments, uh, I'm, I'm pleased for, for where we are. And, and, you know, our players, I think, are happy and um, uh, excited about the people that we have working with them every day. Thanks, Coach. D. Scott. Hey, Van. Um, Chris Kleiman during the summer said that uh, Jerron McPherson is going to be the leader in the back end. And uh, Wyatt Hubert says that he is the most competitive player out there on the field. Tell me a little bit about Jerron and just what he brings to the table in both those areas. Well, Jerron, I never call him Jerron. I call him J-Mac. J-Mac. Um, no, but J Mac is is a very competitive player, and uh, like like um, Wyatt said, he, he's he's uh, you know in everything that he does, he's always trying to win, uh, and and I think he does a great job also of of you know of course uh, the fact that he wants to win, but he also inspires the younger players, and he's also one of our players who who's always willing to to help a young younger player be able to figure it out. He's always wanting to pull a younger player aside to, to kind of to help that guy along. And so I think that's, that's something that I'm really proud and excited for him about. Uh, but w- when you talk about the leader, the leadership in that, in that group, I think he would be one of the leaders in my mind. And, and you know, it, it didn't just start. You know, he's, he's kind of always been that guy. He's always been that way. That shift from Nickelback to safety, and I presume is going to replace uh, um, Denzel Goolsby. Right. How has he adjusted uh, to that switch, and how he's how has he maybe improved over the last year? Well, I think in our defense, that position, uh, more so than the nickel position, has a lot more responsibility in terms of making calls and checks and and getting more people lined up. Whereas as, as he was the nickel, someone got him lined up. And it's not that he wouldn't know what he was doing at that position, but that position is, is more of a listening position. Whereas the position that he's in now, there's a lot more responsibility. And, and I think it just fits, you know, for a guy to be a senior, uh, it fits for him to be in control, in command, uh, in, at that position a little bit more. So it, it fits right where he is and right really where we need him to be. Thank you. Adam Mark. As it was just announced, they're going to try and do, I think it was 25% of fans to be in the stadium. Just how much of an impact do you think it's going to make on the players of having just a small amount of fans to cheer them on the stadium compared to just having no fans in the stadium and just a quiet stadium of just the teammates? Well, you know, I, I could make a joke. I could have many jokes about that. Uh, but, you know, our, our players, they, they, they 
appreciate our fan base and they appreciate the excitement that 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 they have uh, on game day and we all understand that that you know this is a moment of adjustments and this is a moment where uh, we're getting the opportunity to play and everything is not going to be perfect right we we all our players understand it and so we're going to make the best of whatever the situation we're, we're dealt you know if we're dealt with having um 25 capacity uh 10 capacity i think we're going to appeal to see if we can get 70 percent capacity uh but but whatever it may be I'm, that was a part of the joke right um but whatever whatever it might be you know our players are going to deal with it uh they know where i fan where our fans stand in terms of enthusiasm and support for k-state football uh, but we have to make sure that we keep everyone healthy while we do what we do and uh so our players are uh, they're excited for any amount of fans to be in the stands and they understand where we are from a, a position of keeping everybody safe ryan black hey van how you doing today doing all right ryan how you doing I'm doing okay. Well, uh, when we got to speak with Coach Kleiman last week, he said that maybe one of the few positives about uh, this whole situation is that with none of you coaches going on vacation, you guys were around each other all the time. And specifically for uh, Coach Stannard, uh, what was that like getting to know him? And did you have any relationship relationship with him prior to him coming to K-State? Well, first of all, before I answer your question, you seem to be the most relaxed person here uh, on your couch. You, 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 I'm watching the NBA playoffs. They're, they're, they've okay. already started, so I'm sitting in my living uh, room. Well, uh, good. You just look relaxed. I'd hate to see what <laughs> that is you're drinking. But anyway, um, Coach Stannard, having an opportunity to, like, like Coach Kleiman said, having an opportunity to be together as a staff, uh, has been has been cool. Of course, everyone wants to get out on the road and go recruit. Uh, but again, this is this is the moment that we're in. So what we decided as a staff to do is try to make the best we could of it. And and then when you bring a new guy onto the staff, having uh, given ha have an opportunity to um, have him learn the defense, have an opportunity to have him learn and relate with the players, albeit Zoom, uh, was important. And so Steve really got the benefit of that. And we as a staff got the benefit to, to have an opportunity to interact with him and to grow to know him. I really didn't have any relationship with him before this time. Of course, I, I knew who he was and there's different guys on the staff. They knew who uh, they knew about him, but they, they didn't know him personally. And uh, it's been it's been great, not not only with Steve, but to have Joe and to be able for us as a defensive staff to be able to spend time uh, continuing to grow together. It's been a great um, it's been a great moment for us, even even at our entire staff, because it's one of the things that I've always said is we have really good staff chemistry. And, and I think, you know, Coach Kleiman, you continue to hear that did a great job of assembling, assembling a staff of, of good men. And when you have that and you're in a room with good men, um, you know, it's always a great, great time. As a follower to that, what's his personality like out on the field so far since you guys have been out of practice? Is he a very kind of energetic guy? Kind of what, what's he like out there? Well, I, I think he, he's always teaching his players. Uh, and, you know, he, he's not a, you know, I don't think we have a staff. Well, we may have one. I was about to say, I don't think we have a staff of guys who, who really are loud and, and uh, we just have one. I'm not going to call it any names, uh, but he coaches the offensive line. Uh, other than him, uh, everybody else is, is pretty, pretty much even keel. And that's how Steve is. Uh, he's, a, he's, he's always teaching his guys. He doesn't get too excited. Uh, I have seen him flip his wig a couple times, but... Uh, he was just yelling at me at that moment. Uh, so so it, it's fun to, to watch him work, to watch him coach his players. And and he fits right into the things that I heard about him before he came. And, and then one last thing, because I want to make sure other people are going to get a chance to talk. But uh, just, you know. You never care about that. 
Did you what? You never cared about that before. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but Ryan and Kenny would say I always try to get in one last question, but it's like, hey, got to make use of the time, right? Uh, you know, is that, you know, when you got here last year, you talked about working with Coach Klanderman, and it's kind of being like that two, co- uh, two cooks in the kitchen, you know, with you guys kind of both coaching the back end. Are those right. conversations a little bit different now because, you know, he is the defensive coordinator. So now it's not just – the calls don't just affect your two position groups, but it's for the entire defense. Or are they still basically the same kind of conversations? No, I think they're the same. Our relationship is the same. Um, there was, there's a certain. I believe that there has to be a level of of understanding. There has to be a level of respect of authority paid to Joe. Joe's the defensive coordinator, and uh, that's. That's it. That's the end of the story. And and as the defensive coordinator, if if he wants us to be in cover three, we're going to be in cover three. And that that's the commitment that that I made. Um, and you know, and I think that's what you have to do when you are defensive backs coaches. You know, you have different philosophies. You have different techniques. You have different mindsets, thought processes. And so, so you can always have conflict. Well, Joe and I never did that. We never did that before. But, but now that he's the defensive coordinator, and as a defensive coordinator, you have to stand back and, and watch the whole defense. And as a head coach, Coach Kleiman, he has to see the whole team. And I think sometimes that's, that's difficult for assistants to be able to do that. Uh, fortunately, uh, for me in this new role, I've been able to see some of the things that Coach Kleiman deals with as a head coach. And uh, we kind of talked the other day about, you know, sometimes that's a lonely, that's a lonely place, you know, uh, because you have to make decisions that affect a lot of people. And, and sometimes everyone doesn't agree with it. Well, I think that's the same, that's the same position Joe as a defensive coordinator can find himself in. So what I try to do is support him in, in all his decisions and, um, and, and, you know, handle it that way. Let's try to get these last three in really quick. Uh, D Scott. Yeah, Van, uh, twice last week, uh, Kleiman and Klanderman both mentioned the name TJ Smith. What does TJ bring to the table? <laughs> well, he's a young player with tremendous intensity. He loves football. He plays hard. He's a, um, a vocal guy. So I, I anticipate all the things that we say about uh, Jerron, that we're going to be saying the same kinds of things about TJ uh, as he continues on in his career because he's very competitive and a uh, very intense young man. Can you see the field this year? You know, it's always hard to say, uh, but but if, if any young man could, he definitely puts him himself in position to be able to say that. We hadn't, we hadn't practiced a whole lot, but the things that we've seen so far will give you the, the, the clue that he could. Thank you. John Kurtz. Yeah, Van, I know Walter Neal's a guy that's had some versatility, has played corner and nickel uh, throughout his career. Just what's the plan for him moving forward this year? Well, we're going to uh, give him the opportunities, all the opportunities that he's had so far. The fact that uh, he's played different positions. Uh, give, anyone who's played different positions definitely adds value. And, you know, when you have a guy who's a leader, uh, then you expect that guy, just like we talked about, Jerron, to be able to come out and, and, and contribute to your team, uh, as he's done over the years. Thanks. The last one right here, Derek Young. Coach, I, I know recruiting is pretty different right now in the – kind of virtual world you are in. But aside from virtual visits, what's the biggest changes you guys have done recruiting wise and especially in regard to evaluation? Well, we've, we've done a lot of video watching, you know, a lot of evaluations. It's been, it's been, I won't say difficult, but it's been very different because we have not been able to, to visit schools. We have not been able to have camps and, and get our hands on, on players. Uh, so, so most of the things we've done have been watching game field, extensive game field, and uh, watching camp videos. There's a lot of kids they send you they send you video of them working out in the park, you know. So you have to 
be able to gather what you can from from that uh, video and then talking to coaches sometimes that's a lost art uh, but we we've, we've had the opportunity to visit with a lot of coaches about what they thought about the player you know you like I said you lose that sometimes when you you're able to bring the kid to the campus and you be able to get a feel for him yourself we hadn't been able to do that and so we've had to to exhaust all options to learn as much as we could about players as we've evaluated uh, and I think you know that'll help us continue to grow as a staff and as a recruiting staff to 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 learn to exhaust all options as we gather information and research players before and even after we offer them. All right, coach. Thank you. Thank you, guys.